I am drawing a timber knife more a timber knife wizard of Oz. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is like, 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 uh, webcam. It's, it's, you go to upload on YouTube and then click on that, and then it says either make a video, uh, download, or make one off webcam, and you choose the second one. <laughs> I'm advertising so much more than the day, and trust me, it's going to be in the beginning because it's just not over. Well, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm just not going to be able to do that. But I'm drawing a shark. Yeah, I know. I'm not drawing what it's going to be. I don't draw them. 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 I Hey there, everybody. I'm Mark Curley. I'm back with another How to Draw a Wazatsu, and I'm going to go ahead and just jump in with this to say let's know how to draw a realistic eye. Um, I'm going in uh, with my black prism color to make the uh, upper eyelid. And uh, let me just say in general that if you want to draw a realistic eye or realistic anything, you really owe to yourself to draw the light. He sounds a lot like Mr. Uh, S. <laughs> Quite thin, you know, down in, in, 
of over here on this section, and as they go along, they get thicker and thicker, um, at least in the reference that I was looking at. And having got that section done, we've kind of got the basic shape in place, the basic guidelines for the eye itself. Now, um, again, every eye is different, but uh, so, uh, most uh, eyes uh, are going to have some kind of eyelid. Anything you do? And uh, this one that I looked at for uh, reference had quite a, I guess you'd call a heavy eyelid. Which else? means that the line of the eyelash is pretty about the hair. distant from the line of the eyelash. Uh, again, those are different lines. Like the hair. In your own eye, you make line that line is quite closer. Uh, and in some Asian eyes, uh, there's almost no line at all. Uh, and, uh, this is not so much a video about I wonder how she make her dress look. So forgive me, I'm just going to I wonder how she make her dress look. I know it should be plaid. A suggestion of an eyebrow here without talking about it. Now, I'm going to zoom in right now to what I feel is the absolutely most important part of this lesson, and that is the iris. And I want you to really see the detail of what I do here, so pardon me while I zoom in. Now, uh, getting a good iris uh, illustration done is the real key to making a super realistic, you know, almost photorealist looking eye. Um, and what I'm doing here, I'm going to do in real time just this section here, sort of roping off or showing these, the, the, the sections that I'm going to darken up and the sections that I'm going to leave white. Basically, this little area in here is going to stay relatively light, uh, and the rest of this stuff is going to get darkened in. Now, I know like, people like this in real time video. People don't like my time lapse, but uh, seriously, this no, is like a special hand on where he does the time lapse. So I'm going to time lapse this part. I'll come back to explain about the choices I made. All right, so uh, you can see where the, the key to getting a nice, uh, shiny looking eye. Uh, getting this nice window shaped uh, highlight, although it doesn't have to be window shaped, it can just be circular or any number of shapes. But make sure that you keep it nice and white and that they, you darken the area near the highlight and that helps the top and makes the whole thing look uh, shinier. And you saw that I spent uh, a fair amount of time adjusting uh, the different shades here. There's a, there's a band area here near the pupil that's uh, um, a certain thickness. There's a whitish area down here. And then, uh, again, in certain types of eyes, the eyes different. Uh, you get the very darkest band uh, of color right around the very edge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and very quickly darken this uh, area again of the eyelashes. Again, this is uh, maybe a, a female eye, so I'm just wearing quite a bit of mascara. And uh, with that, we're starting to come into the home stretch on this video. And again, to keep things uh, a reasonable length, I'm going to have to do some of this in time lapse. But um, hopefully, it, it won't be anything that you can, can follow along with. Basically, I'm going to be adding shading uh, uh, to make the whole thing look a little more 3D. And, and again, I'll come back and explain a little bit about the choices I made. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Hey, look, come here, Patty. Shading, and uh, you know, as you can see, uh, with anything that's you know kind of going for photo realism here, you just need to take your time. You've got to be patient and keep working at it and keep slowly building it up. Um, He's so enthusiastic. That's why I, just, I pretty much had to uh, time lapse through a lot of stuff on this video. That's uh, those are the re requirements of doing something truly realistic, and uh, in many ways, you know, this is the kind of art. 
care style that you want to do, the most important thing that you need to learn is patience. Um, you can do almost anything so long as you're willing to commit the time to it. So, um, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you want to see me do more um, realistic stuff like this, by all means, let me know. I'd be happy to do a whole series of videos like this. This is, of course, uh, what I was trained to do in my youth. Uh, and um, if you are able to draw like this, I think it does help you to draw in any other style uh, even better. Or to you know just bring something extra to it, whether it's the manga style or even the cartoon style. If you know how to draw this way, um, you're going to be able to draw in any style uh, at a higher level. So it's really it's safe to say. Well, let's go ahead and put the pencil down. Um, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Um, I won't show the cover of the book, but I do want to thank people for uh, buying my uh, Mickey Falls uh, series or any of my books. I really do appreciate your support. Uh, it means so much, and it does allow me to keep doing these videos. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll go ahead and end this one with my usual promise that I'm going to be back with another one real soon. My my scarecrow is like scale. What? Scarecrow is like scale. What are you doing for that piece, please? I'm gonna try to vector it. What? Vector it. That means like a simplified but shaded picture of him. Makes it look kind of. Oh, you go over it. You draw over it. Huh? You draw over it. Hi. I do Sometimes. I draw my own stuff too. I do that when I'm bored, like I'm just sitting here. I'm just gonna paint on this picture and make it my own. Yeah, I like, I like design the clothes on these people. I redesign their clothes. Mm -hmm. I gave you a cool quest and I was designing and it's a minor scale. And they have hearts on them. No, 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 no. Okay. Thank the Lord and mercy. Mr. Space, yes. I need your opinion. My money to pay. That is my wizard of Oz. That's a wizard of Oz? Uh-huh. Wow. That's, That's a great scarecrow, drawing. Scarecrow, and then I'm going to do the lion and the, the iron uh, tin dude. Oh, I get it, I get it. That's Dorothy. I'm doing it, Tim Burton style. And the scary crow. That's good. I like it. Like a lot. Do you think I should like, put a decoration on his hat? Go all out. Tim Burton goes all out. Is there anything else I could do to her? Like, if you could give her some, like, dramatic makeup and stuff and color it. I'm not going to color it. I, I'm not good at coloring sketches. I'm surprised Tim Burton hasn't had it. Hasn't been on this in a while, too. I'm surprised, too. My friend uh, Haley gave me the idea. Haley. Uh, yeah. She was like, well, Tim Burton hasn't done a Wizard of Oz yet. I'm going to do it. That's my job. I'm going to remake what's it called? Wizard of Oz in Tim Burton's way. Yeah, I'm not going to have to do anything about it.